In this problem, what we have is four capacitors that are connected to each other, and apparently the capacitance of these four capacitors are equal to each other with a value C. And it is asking us to calculate the equivalent capacitance between points A and B, as well as the charge and the voltage on each capacitor, if the potential difference between points A and B is V. What it means to have a potential difference between points A and B is... Uh, maybe this is a part of a much more complicated circuit and the potential difference is kept constant at V here or you might simply have a simple battery here. It doesn't make any difference when it comes to the equivalent capacitance or the charge or the voltage across these capacitors and since I like to keep things simple I'm gonna stick with the battery here. Now in order to be able to calculate the equivalent capacitance, we need to first identify which capacitors are connected to each other in series and which capacitors are connected to each other in parallel and so on and so forth. Now when you look at this uh, circuit, you can easily see that C1 and C2 are connected to each other in series because they are on the same branch of the circuit. And whatever you have here is simply in parallel with C3 because they are on different branches where the potential difference across them are equal. And finally, whatever you have here is in series with C4. So what we should do maybe is to simplify the circuit step by step. So let's start with C1 and C2 and try to calculate the equivalent capacitance of C1 and C2. So this is the new circuit that I'm interested in. Now, since they are in series, we know how to calculate the equivalent capacitance, C12. So, 1 over C12 will be equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2, which is 1 over C plus 1 over C. Remember, these guys had the same capacitance, which is going to give us 2 over C here. So, apparently, C12 is nothing but C over so we figured out the equivalent capacitance of C1 and C2. Apparently that's equal to C over 2. Now simplify this further by considering these two capacitors that are connected in parallel. So we want to simplify this circuit to this one. And I'm going to call the equivalent capacitance of this as C123. Now what is C123 equal to? Uh, when you have two capacitors connected in parallel, how do you find the equivalent capacitance? It is simply the sum of the individual capacitances, right? So it's going to be C12 plus C3. But I know that uh, C12 was C over 2, C over 2 plus C. And it's going to give us the equivalent capacitance of 3C over 2. Now let's... Uh, consider these two that are connected in series and I'm going to call the equivalent capacitance of these two C equivalent and our last circuit will be this guy. Now since they are in series the 1 over C equivalent will be equal to then 1 over C123 plus 1 over C4 and what we are going to have is Remember C123 was 3C over 2, so we will have 1 over 3C over 2 plus 1 over C. And if you solve this for 1 over C equivalent, what you are going to get is, what are you going to get? 2 over 3C, you will equate the denominators, so you are going to have uh, 2 here, 3 here, 5 over 3C. So apparently... Apparently, C equivalent is equal to 3 over 5 C. So we got our equivalent capacitance. So this was the answer to part A. Now, let's follow our steps backward and find the voltage and charge on each capacitor. I'm going to start with this one, obviously. If our battery is like this, meaning this is the positive terminal and this is the negative terminal, then this side will be positively charged and this side will be negatively charged. And let's call the charge on this guy Q. So you will have positive Q here and negative Q here. And if I ask you guys what would be the charge on this capacitor, you will tell me that, well, you know the capacitor equation, which says Q is equal to C times V, where C is our equivalent capacitance. 
So if you calculate Q here, what you're going to find is Q is equal to 3 over 5 C times V. And the voltage on this capacitor is basically the voltage of the battery. Let's just write it here. Now let's move back one step. What happens when you have two capacitors in series? Well, they will have the same charge and they will share the voltage. And the equivalent capacitor will have the same charge as these individual capacitors. So if I call the charge on this guy Q123 and you will have obviously minus Q123 here and this is the positive terminal, this is the negative terminal, let's call this Q4 and let's call this minus Q4. So Q123 is equal to Q4 since they are in series and that is also equal to Q which apparently is 3 over 5 C times V. All right, now we have the charges on these capacitors. Now what are the voltages? To determine the voltages, again, we are going to make use of the capacitor equation. So let's call the voltage across this guy, 1, 2, 3, and voltage across this, V4. So V4 will be equal to Q4 over C4, which, by the way, is 3 over 5 CV divided by C. The capacitance of C4 is C, remember. So the Cs will cancel out and we are going to find the voltage across C4 to be 3 over 5 V. All right, now what about V123? So if you calculate V123, it's going to be Q123 divided by C123, which is again 3 over 5 CV divided by the equivalent capacitance C123 was 3C over 2, 3 over 2C. So the Cs cancel out, the 3s cancel out, and you are going to find this to be 2 over 5V. Now remember what we said, when you have two capacitors that are connected in series, they will have the same charge and they will share the voltage. So if you pay attention to the voltages here, you will find that the sum of these two is equal to actually V, just like what we expected. They shared the voltage according to their capacitances. And whichever has the larger capacitance has the lower voltage. Okay, now that we are done with this, let's move back one more step. But before I do that, maybe what I should do is I should label these points, right? So let's call this point C and let's call this point D here. And these points will correspond to the points here because, because this is the equivalent capacitance between the points C and D, the equivalent capacitance due to these two. And since they are parallel, you know that the voltage on C3 and C12 is the potential difference between point C and D, which is, by the way, V123. So V12 is equal to V3, which is equal to V123, which is 2 over 5V. So we know the voltage on the C3 and V12. Now that we have the voltages, we can easily calculate Q3 and Q12 for which we are going to make use of again the capacitor equation. So let's start with Q12. Q12 is equal to C12 times V12 which is going to give us C12 is C over 2. V12 is 2 over 5 V. So apparently this is equal to 1 over 5 C times V. So we got Q12. What about Q3? Q3 is equal to C3 times V3, which is C times 2 fifth V. So it's going to be 2 fifth C V. Now, again, uh, remember what happens when you have two capacitors in parallel. They will have the same voltage and they will share the charge according to their capacitances. Now, the total charge was 
Q123, which is 3 fifths times CV. As you can see, when you add them up, you get that total charge. And the one which has the largest capacitance, in this case it is C3, will have the largest charge. So we got that too. Now let's move back one more step and calculate the V1, V2 and the charges on these capacitors. And again, maybe what I should do is, I should label these points. So I'm going to call this now point E and I'm going to call this point F. So it is these points here, E and F. These guys are connected in series. It means that they are going to have the same charge, but they will share the potential. So the charge on this one, I'm going to call this Q1 and minus Q1, Q2 and minus Q2 here, where Q1 is equal to Q2, which is equal to Q12, which we found it to be, where is that? 1 over 5 times CV. So now that we have the charges, we can easily calculate what V1 and V2 should be. From the capacitor equation, V1 will be equal to Q1 over C1, which is 1 over 5 CV divided by C. The C's will cancel out and we are going to find that to be 1 over 5 times V. And V2 will be equal to Q2 over C2, which is again 1 over 5 CV divided by C, which again is going to be 1 over 5 times V. So we determined the voltages across these two capacitors as well. We know that the capacitors in series uh, share the voltage according to their capacitances. And since these two have the same capacitance, I expect them to share the voltage equally. The voltage between E and F was 2 over 5V. And as you can see, they share that voltage equally, just as expected. Okay, now we are done with this problem. Let's move on to the next one. In this problem, we have two capacitors, C1 and C2 that are initially uncharged and let's call these positions position A and position B for the switch. By bringing the, the switch to position A, the capacitor C2 is charged by a battery of voltage V0. Once it is fully charged, we bring the switch up to position B, effectively disconnecting the battery and connecting C1 and C2 together. And the question is, what would be the charge on each capacitor after the switch is brought to position B? In order to answer this question, let's have a look at the charges and the voltages on these capacitors at different instants. And I want to start with the charging of C2. Now, when we bring the switch to position A initially, C1 is not yet a part of our circuit, and this is essentially what we are going to have. With this circuit, we are going to charge the capacitor C2 here, and when it is fully charged, the voltage across this capacitor will be equal to the voltage of the battery, which is V0, and let's call the charge on it Q2. So we are going to have Q2 and minus Q2 on the plates of this capacitor, and if we were to use the Capacitor equation, Q2 will be equal to C2 times V0. Let me remind you that we haven't done anything to capacitor C1 yet, so there is no charge on it at the moment. Now, let's have a look at the moment we toggle the switch from position A to position B. So we are taking the battery out of the picture. This is what we are going to have. And at this instant, the charge on... C2 is still Q2 and the voltage across it is V0 and remember we said we didn't have any charge on C1 so Q1 at this instant is 0 so if there is no charge there will be no voltage across the capacitor C1 also but right after this moment what will happen is due to the difference of potential on the plates of these capacitors there will be a charge transfer and this charge transfer will continue until the plates of these capacitors reach the same potential. So you are going to have now some charge transferred from C2 to C1. And the positively charged plates 
reach the same potential, the negatively charged plates reach the same potential, meaning the voltage across these two capacitors are same. So let's call that V prime. And let's call the charges on these capacitors Q1 and Q2. So this is the equilibrium state. Now what we need to do is somehow we need to be able to find V prime and Q1 and Q2. Let's quickly write the capacitor equations uh, at equilibrium. So Q1, Q1 is going to be equal to C1 times V prime and Q2 is going to be equal to C2 times V prime. Okay, now what? Well, if you look at this circuit initially, right, the left side of the circuit is not actually connected electrically to the right side of the circuit. Now remember, these two plates are actually separated by an air gap or vacuum. So are these plates. So the total charge that I have on the right side of the circuit is Q2. And since charge is conserved, I should have the same amount of charge after the equilibrium. So what I'm trying to tell you here is from conservation of charge, we are going to have Q2 is equal to Q1 plus Q2. And I know what Q2 is. That is C2 times V0. This should be equal to C1 times V prime plus C2 times V prime. So if you solve this equation for V prime, what you are going to get is C2 divided by C1 plus C2 times V0. Once you know, once you know the voltage, you can easily determine Q1, which is going to be C1 times V prime, which is C1 times this quantity here, C2 divided by C1 plus C2 times V0, and Q2 will be equal to C2 times this quantity, C2 times V prime, which is C2 squared divided by C1 plus C2 times V0. So these are going to be the charges on the capacitors after the switch is toggled to position B. And with this, we are going to end this video. But before I end this video, I would like to remind you that if you have any questions related to the materials covered in these video lectures, you can ask them using the discussion boards provided to you under the particular week of the weekly content. So I will see you guys in the next video.